Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today I have a very interesting topic for you. We want to talk about open source collaboration. I had the perfect opportunity to work together with a Trophy, which is a non-profit organization and I had the chance to work in a real project for Flutter and I can show you what I usually do if I'm coming to a new project and how that works. And one very interesting point is I figured out that open source projects are a little bit like a bank haste. So if you rob a bank because you need a good team, you need to understand how to go through it. So you need to analyze everything, right? Checking the building. And third, you need to make a plan how you want to work further. And after that, you go into execution. And now without further ado, let's get started with part number one, the team. The good thing about Trophy is that it is a non-profit organization. That means they are really a corporation or a, an instance that work together to make it possible to create public transportation systems for all over the world as an open source platform. And how is the idea? Well, they create a Trophy core, which everyone can check out and use for yourself, which relies on open map data and also on map tiles. The benefit here is that everything is open source, you can jump into it. But how did I manage to get into the team? Well, I got asked by Christoph, one of the responsibilities there, and he was asking me, hey Max, do you want to support our team? And I was like, sure, why not? Let's have a look. And I was invited into two meetings with them where we had like a Zoom meeting, Zoom call, and we just talked a little bit about how everything works and what plans they have at the moment. The good thing about that is if you really know the team, you can understand or you have a feeling if the people you are working with are really helpful. And this is how you get to know the team of a project. You need to understand who works in which area or what they do especially. So I got interested in, as you know it, development. So how can I help now Trophy with development? All right, so part number two, analyzing the project. The idea is that you don't really start coding before you don't understand what is already done and how it goes further. And if we check out, I hope I will display here here somewhere now the github repository you will see that here is a lot of old code so there hasn't been an update for several months now and as you know well, Flutter 2.0 has been released. We have now web support. We have now all these little smarts. And what that usually means for larger projects is you have to update so many packages and you have null safety problems sometimes. Uh, also, there were a whole different translation system with Intel translations that I figured out and it is a real problem to upgrade to newer packages. So that was one thing that I directly saw that we need to upgrade somehow that we are staying on the top of the time, right? The second part that I understood is that we don't have any analyzer options. You know, without taking a look into the project, without even see some code, I could see two things that we could enhance. The third thing that I wanted to change is there is no CI, CD. So I didn't check out code, I didn't download it anything, I didn't even start it to work on and already saw free construction sites that we can work on without any distractions from others. The second thing that I usually do is checking the issues. Also here, you can see now a list of issues. And as you probably see, none of them were triaged. If um, you know some people from Flutter and you are in the Flutter issues, you know that they have usually tags and people react to them asking if this issue is still relevant and so on. None of that have been done here at the moment. So I guess they have like a different project structure. So I was asking a little bit around and I got the answer, well, yeah, we should update them again. And so I started with that because issues, everyone can create them, everyone can have an opinion about them. And so before I start to work with a task in open source, I always create the issues. So we had now issues for CI CD, for Flutter 2.0 upgrade, for null safety, for improving of the readme files, translations were missing, and so on and so forth. And for each, every step, I created an issue just to keep track for myself, okay, which part I can work on. Okay, but then what's next, right? We still are in the analysis phase. So what's next after we have seen the code itself and we have seen the issues, the next step are pull requests. Are there still open things that we could maybe overtake and repair or just 
fix everything there and merge it. And yeah, there have been two. And the one, uh, actually there are two feature branches and feature pull requests. So I took a look into them. Uh, they are still open, I guess, at the moment. If not, you can find them closed in the um, GitHub repository. Links down in the video description. And what I saw is, okay, there are two features that I worked on, bike planning, and the other thing was, I guess, um, creating a custom widget on top of it. So that means how Trophy worked is, or works, is that you have the Trophy core as a main responsibility, and everyone who wants to use it just creates a Flutter app on top of it and can rely on Trophy core. And now the benefit is that everyone can do it with it nearly everything he wants. That means with this custom widgets, you have the possibility as a host system, I call that top layer, a host system, um, has the possibility to inject own custom widgets. But both of these features haven't been completed yet. And as you know, probably open source, sometimes people lose their interest or, or in that case, it was just that there was no time for it. And I asked around, especially at the people um, who are working on these PRs. First, I started with commenting in the PR, is this PR still valid? And then I asked a little bit on the Slack channel that I got invited from Trufi. And I figured out that these PRs are still valid and necessary, but nobody had time to merge them yet. So I was talking with the people, tried to enhance that, worked on their branches at the end to finalize these PRs. And now hopefully they are inside of the trophy. So now we have cleaned a lot. We have already created issues and we have cleaned up a little bit the pull request, which leads us to a next important stuff. And this is also still not really execution. It's still analyzing, right? We didn't have really created something or written some code. The next part is to understand the readme files and documentation. And if you don't understand the code right out of the box, if you cannot start it, then usually you have a problem, right? You need some kind of ramp up. And usually the readme file is the place to go. In our case, well, the readme file was existent, which is already a very big bonus, um, but it was not really helpful for developers how to get started. So also here I made for myself a check mark, like improving the readme file would be something important. So I added also that into the issues. So we talked about the team. You understood that we communicated via Slack. Now we are talked about analyzing, so which parts needs to be done, right? And now that we have discovered which parts need to be done, now let's think about the execution. All right, so the problem with that is usually that you can start right away to write code and create crazy stuff like I did actually, um, because I tried to upgrade to Flutter 2.0 and I created but beforehand several different PRs. The first one was I needed to make the test that were actually in the project running again because none of them or a lot of them were broken and I needed to fix them first because I wanted to have a clean slate so that I can work on them and I started to make my first PR fixing the tests of the project. After I have done that and everything worked in that area, I decided to create a GitHub Actions for it. Because GitHub Actions don't necessarily mean CI, CD. It's sometimes more than enough if we have a continuous integration that just runs your public tests. So whenever all the tests are running green, you are fine to go to merge the PR. And that was the first step I integrated because I don't need to directly create everything, but that. After that, I decided, okay, let's start with the linting. But what I understood there is that a lot of things have to be changed for the linting. So in that area, I talked with the other guys who are working on the project and we decided together that it would make a benefit if we first upgrade to Flutter 2.0. So I started with that task and let me tell you, that was a quite an adventure. As you probably guessed it already, Flutter 2.0 upgrade is not easy if you have a lot of dependencies. So we started to identify all the packages and I just tried to migrate to Flutter 2.0 and get all the packages one level higher. So thanks to Pub Outdated and getting the major versions with that. So there are fantastic tools like Flutter Pub um, packages, a major um, updates it is. I think you will see it there somewhere. You have the benefit to really get all the updates that you need in order to push the next major version. But as always, that would be too easy if it directly worked. So for us, it was the Intel translation package uh, that made a lot of problems. And 
I took a look into a GitHub issue there I saw, hey, guys, if you want to upgrade to Flutter 2.0 and you use still that package, the best idea, thanks to Dominic, was to um, get away with the old way of translating to the new generate L10N way. So that means you create just the ARP files and let them run the Flutter generator through it. So I did that and hey, that worked very well. I was really happy with that upgrade. So I needed to change a lot of code there, but the translations changed so much and now everything works that I could upgrade all the major versions. And the best thing is after that PI, I was even possible to run Flutter web on it. So that's quite an improvement, right? So we have web on stable and we have currently this huge PR that needs to be worked through. Now, if I have such a PR that is very large, first I set it to a draft. That means I don't want that everyone does um, uh, work already on that and review it. So I started to make it on a draft and work on the different parts as long as I need it to, that I can say, okay, it is reviewable, it is ready to review. After that, if the CI CD works, all tests running green, I created several tests for it and I made my changes, then I will remove the draft flag and send it to everyone who is interested in that code. All right, so that brings us to the last point. If you are done with your execution, always verify that everything still works. And to be honest, that was not too easy in that project because we didn't have so much tests. So I want to make it important and stress it enough. If you work as a programmer, always write tests. It makes the life for everyone easier. If you have such a hard refactoring like I had in my place, if the tests are not there, you cannot be sure that all the functionality is still working the same. So I could run the tests that were there and hey, guess what, they were green. But I couldn't verify that all the functionalities that were implemented are still working the same way. So it's like a hope that everything is there. Additionally, our team worked with Localize and also with some local on the clone or on the repository translations, which led to another very important problem, syncing. So if you have a lot of translations in a tool like Localize, and a lot of translations on the clone. That means, well, the developers work here and some people work here, so you will never have them synced. Out of that problem, I thought, okay, let's make that harsh. I wrote several scripts that were using the localized 2 CLI, getting the data from localized directly and push that directly into our code base. My hope for the future is that we can integrate that in a CI CD way so that I don't have to do it manually and I could remove all the translation files from the project. But until then, we have to work with that for now. If you have great ideas how we can improve the project, please leave them down in the comments or get over to the GitHub repository and add some issues. If you want to contribute, please feel free to reach out to um, one of us or down in the video description and I will send you some information where you can find it. Down in the video description, you have also the links to the Trophy organization, to the GitHub repository, if you want to take a look how I worked in the last couple of days. All right, this video was a little bit different than my usual approaches and I made like a story time. And I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, see ya guys, bye.